Hello everyone, we will continue the topic background jobs and in the previous videos we understood how to define a background job, how to schedule the background jobs, how we can go for variance, use of variance in the background jobs. Now we will go for extremely important concept. If some interviewer is asking the questions based upon background jobs, this is guarantee the question from the background job. How to debug a background job? Suppose simple example. Background jobs runs by their own in the background. There is no manual intervention. There is no interaction. They run by their own at the specified date or time. Whatever is there. Now, suppose a background job run and after that, yes, suppose wrong data got updated or wrong data is there in the output. So how, how we can debug that particular background job? Because with the help of debugging only we can identify, yes, why, why these things got wrong in the output why these things got wrongly updated in the output, yes. So our next topic is how to debug a background job. And we have one most important transaction code, JDBG. You can learn by the way, job debug. DBG means debug. So JDBG is the transaction code to debug a background job, extremely important transaction code. In every interview, this is the transaction code which every interviewer asks, yes, how you debug the background job. So what I will do, I will create a background job and then I will show you how you can debug. So I will go to SM36 transaction code. You all know you can define a background job through SM36. So suppose now I will give BG job underscore six. Suppose I will take high priority job only. Now I will go for save button. Suppose I am using same to same program. Suppose I will use variant also. I will go for variant 2, ORD2, which has the order number 1, 2, 3. I will go for save. I will go to back button. Now we got the message. It means job has been scheduled. If I will go to SN37 transaction code. Now, I'll just put the name because we have so many jobs. BG job underscore six. Now job is in scheduled status. Now I will simply, simply release this job. We have to give the start condition because if job is not released, it will never, never run. So I will give the start condition. Suppose I will run on immediate basis because I want to show you the result immediately. So I will go for immediate. You can schedule based upon date or time also. It is totally your wish. Suppose I will run immediately. I will go for save. Now again, the job has not released yet. Once I will go for save, then the job will be released because I will not be able to see the release status because the program is very small. So immediately after release, yes, the job finish. So I will be able to see the finish status. Now I simply, simply check the school. So I clicked on to school and this is a school. Suppose this is a wrong output. Suppose something is wrong with the output. It means 
I need to debug this job and identify yes why why this wrong output generated. So in that case, debugging is the way because you can debug the job because job is finished now. Yes, but with the help of debugging, you can identify yes this was the wrong thing happened at that point of time. So you can simply select the job and what is the transaction code? JDBG, job debug. Have you put seen when I put this transaction code, I automatically entered into debugging mode. Now this is the major confusion, especially for the freshers. They will say, this is not our code. Our code is something else in the program. If I will show you program, this is our program code. Now, in that case, you all know we have four execution keys. F5, F6, F7, F8. What is F7? F7 is return, return. And it is clearly explained in the debugging playlist. Whenever you want to go to your original code, whenever you want to return to your original position, just do F7. As of now, you are able to see SAP code, but you want to debug your own code. So in that case, do one thing, do F7. So it is taking you to the original position. It is returning F7, 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 F7. I will again do F7, F7. Do F7, still you are till you are not able to reach up to your original code. F7, F7. Now you can see I am in my original code. Now you can debug in the same way you can use the execution keys. Suppose I am doing F6. If you see, we used the variant to ORD2. So what was the input at that point of time? It is clearly saying. The input was one, two, three order number. If you remember in the previous video, when we created the variant ORD2, if I will go for the program, the variant one ORD2 is for order number one, two, three. Same to same thing is there. So first query, we can execute doing F6 key. So first query executed successfully. We got three records in the first internal table. Our internal table is not initial. Then we are fetching data from item table. Rest is, you know the debugging very well, how you can debug using the execution keys. So this is the way how you can analyze where is the problem when background job run at that point of time. And yes, once you put the transaction code JDBG, do F7, F7 to go back to your original position. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we covered how you can debug a background job and we have most important transaction code that is JDBG. You can select your job. Yes, put the transaction code. You will enter into debugging mode. And yes, at the initial level, you will find lots of SAP code. But you can do F7, F7 key to go back to the original position or to your program code then you can debug in the same way which you are doing the debugging in other programs and you can identify where is the problem in that particular program. Now in the next video, we will see how to go for debugging of a active job. See in this case, what happened? Job finished and we debug, but we have so many scenarios in which we want to debug when the job is running at that point of time. At this point of time, what we did, job finished and then we debugged after that. 
But yes, we have so many scenarios in real time projects. We do not want to debug a finished job. We want to identify when the job was running. What was the reason at that point of time? So in the next video, we will see how to go for a active job. So that's it in this video. Thank you.